it also costs zero cents to subscribe with a Twitch Prime. And, uh, or, you know, that is, of course, if you already have, if you already have a uh, Amazon Prime subscription. And uh, if you do subscribe for zero dollars with your Twitch Prime, which you get for free, you can avoid the ads, uh, like at the top of the hour, like the one I'm about to run right now. Um, this way you get a ad-free broadcasting experience, you know? Okay, Google Moretz. I vote Moretz. Shut up. I don't care what, what you vote for, you fucking jackass. You're only proving to me that, like, no matter how progressive... No matter how progressive you are, like, you have no problem. You have absolutely no fucking problem... justifying uh, a, a, a Zionist occupation. Like, I don't care. Also, do you know, I, like, here's what I don't understand. Like, are you saying that you're just fucking trolling me or something? Like, is that, is that, like, you're just like, the entire time you're just fucking trolling? Uh, like, it, it's just fun for you? We can't win with you? Dude. Dude, dude, either you have to literally be completely fucking, I, I don't understand, like, you can't come to me and tell me you're fucking progressive and, and left wing and not recognize that you're either A, trolling, straight up fucking trolling and, and uh, doing it on purpose, or B, legitimately believe that, like, the, the genocidal apartheid state has legitimacy and deserves to do the insane uh, uh, acts of, of war and massacre against the Palestinian people. Even though, you know, apparently uh, the, the person that, uh, the person Nitsan Horowitz uh, is, is still saying that the ICC probe is legitimate, but only on, of course, uh, the, the illegal uh, settlements. The mod comment says, uh, pet the chud. I love when, I love when the most woke, I love when the most woke party, like the, the labor Zionist party still literally believes in, um, still literally believes in, in oppressing Palestinians. It's just like, not as, not as aggressive. So, okay. My bad, dude. Like you make it harder. Apartheid isn't real. Yeah, dude. Apartheid isn't real, dude. We just have separate roads for Palestinians and Israelis and literally build fucking checkpoints between, like, the limited areas that Palestinians can go to and give them separate, uh, give them a, a no rights whatsoever and only take away their citizenship but never actually offer them Israeli citizenship. But apartheid isn't real, dude. It's crazy. Like, you're just crazy. It just sounds a lot like apartheid in every single way. Except for the fact that uh, it's just, it's not real, dude. Come on. This person is a troll, right? I don't think they're, I, I don't think that they're trolling. I, I mean, I don't know. They say like really fucking weird shit. So I'll move on, dude. This is literally a Mossad agent. I mean, she's not doing a good job defending her viewpoints, so I'm not a troll. Sorry, Israeli POV is unfamiliar to you guys. Dude, you are literally, 
you are testing the boundaries of like what I can say without coming across as hateful against all Israelis. You understand that, right? You are like the, the Corey Jill, uh, Gil Schuster video that makes Israelis look bloodthirsty as fuck when he asks them questions. You're literally here doing that right now. I don't know why you're doing this. You had every opportunity in every capacity to make it feel like, no, 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 there are progressive Israelis out there that like totally think that this is unjustifiable, I promise. Yet instead you're like, no, we are all fucking bloodthirsty and like our most progressive party that I would give, a, give for you, that I would show you is like actually progressive, is still fucking bloodthirsty and, and uh, does not believe that apartheid is existing uh, in Israel when it clearly is. So I don't understand why you're doing this when you're not making the Israeli POV look good. You're just reporting that the Israeli POV is bad. So either you're like literally a fucking Nazi trying to make Israelis look bad, or I don't know what the fuck you are. This is why so many Palestinians say that like even the labor and like the left-wing uh, liberal Zionists are still just as bloodthirsty, maybe not as bloodthirsty as like Likud or whatever, but you know, still pretty fucking bloodthirsty. Nah, dude, the fucking human... I'm a liberal, I'm a social democratic, secular feminist, progressive egalitarian, green politics, two-state solution, labor Zionist, and I think that the fucking Human Rights Watch is delusional. That's what you're saying. You're saying that the Human Rights Watch is actually fucking crazy for saying that Israel is an apartheid state. Even though I, am, I believe in social democracy, secularism, feminism, and all this other shit. Like, I'm sorry. You make it harder for so many people... She's provoking so you can say something that they can call loosely anti-Semitic? Yeah, that's not gonna fucking happen because I'm not an anti-Semitic person. The problem is... The problem is that for most people, I'm letting you know, like for most people, for most normal people that are unfamiliar with what's going on in fucking Israel, Palestine, they see people getting bombed every fucking day and then they hear uh, someone like yourself in the chat be like, I'm such a fucking feminist, bro. Like, I'm literally a Green Party uh, voter. Like, what the fuck? Say that, like, the apartheid state is not real when it clearly is. When it's clearly been very well defined. You just make Israelis look bad. I'm sorry. You literally make it seem like even the most woke and most progressive Israelis are still, like, fucking on board with uh, uh, apartheid. Meretz is not the most woke party. The most woke mainstream party in Israel is literally the Israeli Arab party list, which includes the communists. Yeah, I mean, okay, I'm saying like out of the predominantly uh, Jewish uh, parties. It's just so weird. Maybe you're just saying all this shit so like some dumbasses can fucking trickle into your, uh, into your chat or something. I assume you have like, uh, I assume this is self-promotion for you so that then you can turn around and fucking continue the perpetual victim narrative that you've cultivated for yourself. Like, oh, look, Palestinians are actually victimizing me by existing, uh, for hundreds of years in a land that I've decided is mine. And then, uh, oh my God, look at how, uh, aggro these people are. No, don't worry. I actually have a career that is real. Cough. What? Are you so delusional that you literally just said that like what I do isn't a real career? What the fuck? You got rolled? I think they're literally provoking me to be like, I I'm pretty... I'm pretty financially stable, like... Apartheid and genocide is pro-Palestinian, uh, pro-Palestine Western narrative. I don't care how much you slender me. This is the most Israelis take. Slender, slender assumption, yada, yada. You're just slendering. Okay. Yeah, now I know you're fucking trolling because that's really stupid that you just said that. <laughs> like, yo, there's 30,000 people in here watching, you fucking delusional weirdo. <laughs> 
hit him where it hurts. Oh, wow. There's a lot of dumbasses in here. Guys. Like, I think after a certain point, like, it's a, it's a legitimate and viable career choice. I don't know if you're like 14 or not, but. Like, I, I'm, I'm confused. Like, do you guys really think that it's a, that, that was an own? <laughs> like. Yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's crazy. My fucking, my, my career is, is so shit, dude. I, I got owned. Either one, it's fine. These are our lemma, it's the meaning of the structure of the constant of the new brain. Should we see it for the Israeli? The Israeli, I keep the head down, but I'm not going to stay in the room. For sure, the Israelis will be destroyed because Palestine is not their right. Destroyed as in killed? Uh, they should be killed, yes. They should be killed, yes. Because what was taken by force can only be retrieved by force. Taken back by force. Because Israel is a very powerful tyrant and I'm sure that God will take it up For sure God will, will destroy them. Um, I really thought she was going to be nicer. As God will break Israel's arms like that. Like, uh, what was her name? Musa was saying. Yeah, that's real footage of Scarlet. Yeah, no, this is, this is unironically the fucking occupier take. Just uh, reversed. It's still bad. If Palestinians get back all of Palestine, what happens with the, all the Jews? Why do you entertain shit like streaming isn't a real career? What? No, I, I... I think it's sad when you say that to someone who's like coming up. I think it's like kind of a fucked up thing to say to someone who's like pursuing their dreams. You know what I mean? Like it's a, but, uh, but when you say that to someone like myself, it's like fucking so stupid. Like what the fuck? Wait, what happened? Your money is from 13 year old white boys. I'm glad you think you have a career. No, don't what? Who cares? Who's giving me money? Like, what the fuck? Also, that's not even true, but... That's so weird. See, shit like that makes me feel the person doesn't value labor. Yeah, I was gonna say, like... Well, thank you for subscribing to me, 13-year-old white boy Scarlet Muse. The age demographic is 18 to 24, yes, but it, it still, it doesn't matter. Even if, like, you were making money from 13-year-old white kids, like, okay, but, like, you're still, you know, there's still compensation for your labor. It's still a, a, a career, not only a career, but a viable one, but not only that, but one that, like, is uh, pretty rewarding. So I, I don't know, I just... I did and I was gifted as if I'd give you my shekels. Okay. I can't tell if, uh, this person's gotta be trolling, dude. This would be a few million uh, the same thing will happen to the Israelis. They have what to a... figure it out because just as they made us uh, go everywhere and they have to do the same thing. Okay, even the ones who were there before 1948? And their descendants? But what solution doesn't end up Jews getting oppressed? Dude, how the fuck are Jews going to get oppressed, man?
They hold all the power in Israel. What the fuck are you talking about? If anything, anything that happens, it's going to look like, uh, it's going to look like, uh, the, the post-apartheid South Africa, where the Israeli Jews are still going to maintain all, uh, forms of control and continue to oppress, uh, the Palestinians are now, that are now a part of, uh, Palestinian society. Do not, like, the reality is that it's going to still... It's not going to be a two-state solution, but even in a one-state solution, Palestinians are still uh, going to get dominated and oppressed, but marginally, they will be in a better uh, position. Giving Palestinians equal rights means Jews will be oppressed. It's certainly a take, a brain-dead one, but a take. I know, I know. Aren't white people fleeing from South Africa? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, Israelis have a higher population than Palestine? No, it's like, at most, it's 50 50. And especially if you include, especially if you include Palestinians living in diaspora. It's not true. مش كان في هود كابلسوني وأربعين هون فلسطين كان في أنا حزب من الطائفة السامرية. As to my knowledge, they were the Samarites. Samaritans. Samaritans. No, but there were also Jews here. Yeah. There were six hundred thousand Jews. كان في تقريبا ستة مئة ألف يهودي. I don't know about this. Wait, what? What the fuck was that? That is not true, dude. What? What? I need to understand what he's talking about. Like what? What the fuck? Wait, what? Does he mean, does he, what, what the, what, when is he talking about? Is he talking about after, uh, after, uh, uh, like historic pal after, uh, British migration or what is he talking about? Oh, 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 he means like, he means post-World War One British mandate, uh, uh, migration in between 1918 and 1948. It's kind of a weird way to say. It's kind of a weird way to fucking say that there were 600,000, uh, uh, there were 600,000 Jewish people living here in nine before 1948, because it's still, it's still after, uh, 300,000. It's still th after 300,000, uh, uh, Jews migrated into historic Palestine. Cause before before that, the, 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 wait, what, actually, what the fuck I'm talking about? It, it has to be, wait, no, that's not even true, dude. What the fuck? Even before, like, in between, okay, here, here is numbers, okay? Here are the numbers. According to the Jewish virtual library.org, the core population of Jews living in that area in 1517 is 5,000. It's 1.7% 1 of the population. 1882, 24,000, 8% of the population. 1914, 94,000, 13.6% of the population. 1918, 8.1% of the population. These are, these are like Arab Jews as well, by the way. This is like all Jews. Okay. 
So before 1948, there's 700,000 uh, Jews living in Israel, right? Except something happened here, as you can see. In between British rule of, of uh, like, British takeover of historic Palestine, there is mass migration of Jews into historic Palestine leading up to 1948. That go, that creates a Jewish population there that is more than uh, 8% in 1918 to 32%. Fuck, I'm getting a call. Those are the two big instances of mass migration. First under uh, British, uh, first under British rule, which greatly increases the numbers. And at that time, the mass migration isn't as much as a problem as the land grabs are, or mass expulsion is. And then after that, after World War II, there's obviously then it uh, increases greatly. There's this interesting moment here, though, when you look at the numbers of the population of non-Jews living in Israel-Palestine, where just something happens here. What do you guys think happens to the population of non-Jews that went from, like, these numbers are going up, boop, 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 boop. non-Jews uh, population numbers are going up, boop, 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 boop. and then something interesting happens here where between 1947 and 1948, it's like pee-pee poof. What happened? That's so crazy. I wonder what Scarlet Muse, maybe Scarlet Muse can, can uh, tell us what happened. <laughs> it says, are you on drugs? It's just it's it's called something there is a there is a there's a word for it amongst uh palestinians for what happened here but <laughs> can't the alt-right say the same about whites in europe no you fucking idiot what white people is forcibly being removed from their fucking homeland of 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 like i don't know chelsea like are are british people being forcibly removed from their neighborhoods or some shit are you fucking stupid i know the word is nakba i was memeing Like, how the fuck do you equate this to, like, what uh, Nazis say about white genocide? The false claim that, like, uh, Muslims are taking over Europe. Like, they can't... It's mathematically impossible for the Muslim population to grow to a degree inside of European borders where, like, they overtake the, the white population as though, like, there's a distinction, by the way, which is uh, already broken. Wait, did she say something else? Nah, just, are you on drugs? Yeah, when you don't got nothing, you just, like, say, are you on drugs? Between 47 and 48, the Palestinians willingly left Jordan to make space for Jewish people. You should open an Israeli history book once in a while. came in, in groups, and then they came all at once. First they came gradually, and then they came all at once. Okay. Come to add, who were either Palestinian, they should all go back to their countries of origin because they have come from different countries. 
Okay. What about the ones who were here before 1948? We have no, we didn't have any problems with those who lived here before the 1948. Okay, and if most Israelis today have at least one... <laughs> He's like, we don't have any problems that with with people that lived here before 1948. One relative from before 1948, mm -hmm. can they stay? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they have you can call me brain dead but if you but if israel lets arabs be equal then they let them become more numerous than jews the jews will probably get oppressed that's what always happened throughout history everywhere i live in france and half my high school class left for israel because of insecurity yeah that's precisely what happened to the white people in south africa you're right oh wait that literally didn't happen uh except for in your mind so what the fuck are you talking about and the number, the difference between the white population in South Africa versus the black population in South Africa is 90% to 10%. Okay, maybe a little bit different than that, but like it's not fucking near 50-50, which is designed on purpose to be that way. <laughs> Us Palestinians agreed that we would uh, we would have the 1967 borders, and the Israelis didn't agree to this. The the Israeli government is still building settlements on the lands that they claim they gave back to the Palestinians. Okay, but. He didn't really, he didn't answer the question, but which Israelis can stay? He did, he said, Israelis that live, or Jews that live in historic Palestine before uh, 1948 can stay. He did that. I don't know why, but he was just like, this is not good enough for me. I, I need him to, I need to hear like a more violent take from him or something, I guess. Not good enough. And yeah, not only did he not say 1948, he says 60, 67 borders as well. The first ones that were here for the 1948, we have no problem because we have the Christians, we have the Samaritans, we have the Samarites, and we have the Muslims. Whites in South Africa don't have a history of being marginalized and systematically discriminated against, unlike Jew. First of all, uh, no. Some of the whites in South Africa certainly do have a history of being discriminated against by other uh, white people. And two, what the fuck? Why did you just say Jew in all caps? Like, singular. That's kind of weird. And lastly, it still doesn't matter just because you were fucking oppressed or just because you were uh, or, or marginalized or discriminated against or fucking uh, were purged uh, does not give you the right to do that to other people. Samaritans. And if and even those who are were born here in 1950. <laughs> If we would go back to the original numbers of the of the Jews, mm -hmm. we would find that they were a, mon a minority originally. The majority who are here have come from abroad. Whatever happens to them happens, we don't care. But can they live here? Does Arabs being oppressed also justify Arabs oppressing Jews? Did I ever say that Arabs should oppress Jews? Do I what what makes you think that I find it acceptable to fucking uh hurt Jewish people living in Israel? Like it's such a stupid fucking take. When I literally routinely point out that that, is, that would not be justifiable or just or correct.
Also, advocating for equal rights does not mean the oppression of Jews. Like, what the fuck? Or the oppression of Israelis. They are projecting that because you are Muslim, they are self-reporting. Okay, so younger woman said she'll think about it. Older woman said, she, did she ever have a Jewish neighbor or no? No, no. no. So my sister used to live somewhere. Watch this Syrian blogger? No, dude, what the fuck? You're fucking weird. I'm not going to watch any fucking video that you post. Uh, in Nevis, and she had a Jewish neighbor. And they were living safely. Where was this? When can? Shara 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 you ask my fucking haters, dude, they... No, it is hard. I'm not I'm not a bigoted person, but it's still hard to come across in an angry moment like you uh, don't have fucking hate in your heart. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, does anyone have the fucking... Let's let's do this. Let's let's move on to you know fun stuff. I, I I'm done. I, I don't want to watch this anymore. I I've like. I, I want, uh, Scarlet Muse to shut the fuck up. How do you know the guy is Zionist on this video? Uh, he automatically equated well he, some of the shit that he said, uh, and also he equated like all Jews to Israel. Which is. Oftentimes, if you are uh, a, a Jewish person doing that, like if you are an Israeli person doing that, and you're Jewish on top of that, you probably are a Zionist. Because it's... You're either an anti-Semite, like straight up. He, he said all Jews are Zionists. All right, we got a new fucking 90 Day Fiance, baby. Let's go. Griffin chose this one for us. He said all Jews are Zionist and he is a Jew. Yes. I heard the comparison with South Africa might be right, but I feel like the mentality and the weaponry is completely different. Do you think there was the same hate between the two people in South Africa? Might be a very racist, uninformed take, but I felt the black population wasn't as aggressive and kind of, and more kind of submissive, not what the word is. What? The word is servile and it's very racist. At least you recognize that it's very racist. Uh, and, and no, they, they definitely were aggressive. Unless you consider uh, bombs to be not uh, aggressive, I, I don't know. Um, there was an armed insurrection, uh, bombs. You know? Why don't we talk about E10? Dude, come on. Okay, bro. Fucking Ludwig Andy's over here. Oh my god, E10 this dick. Oh, E10 my nuts, dude. You fucking got me, dude. Fuck. Fuck. Why did I do this? Why? Why did I say this? You just fucking owned me. Must be self-report awareness month. All right, we're, why, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done with politics. Politics is icky and yucky and gross. And I don't want to do it anymore. Okay. I just.
fucking Jesus Christ. After a long day of politics, I like to unwind. Can we address the real issue of your hair? Uh, no. We will not be addressing the real issue of my hair. All right, we got a new couple here. I have no fucking clue what they're going to be like, okay? New 90-day couple is dropping right now. Boys, get in now. New 90-day couple. The hiatus is over. Also, I got to say, get excited, guys, because today I'm eating something different. Uh, I finally got sick of eating the same fucking wrap over and over again. And I decided to cook something different today. I prepared curry chicken. And that's what I'll be eating uh, today. Curry chicken instead of the... Curry chicken uh, and rice instead of... I'm making masamon curry or something similar to that. All right. I know he's in here. I know he's cheating. What the fuck? There it is. There he is. We are busting him. Wait, what the fuck is this? Wait, I I'm confused. Why is it starting like this, Griffin? It says season three. It's how it starts. Did we watch her? My name is Rebecca. I'm 47 years old and I'm a private investigator. I love busting the oh, cheaters. Oh, wait, we did watch her. No, 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 no. That's pretty good. That's pretty fucking good, dude. I think we saw parts of this. We haven't watched this yet, but we saw parts. Maybe her story a little bit. Like, I feel like I'm familiar with her story. But hell yeah, dude. Let's go. I'm gonna go with the tracker on. All right. My favorite part of being a private investigator is putting GPSs on fuck? cars. You know, it's just a, it's an adrenaline rush. Showtime, baby. <laughs> so excited. I live on my own. When I'm not working, I'm spending time with my family. I have three grown children, and I have grandkids. Oh, Amy Tuck, get out. <laughs> Aw, I love you. I love you. Marcus. Be sweet to mommy. I'm super close to my family, but when it comes to relationships, it hasn't worked out very well for me. I fall hard, and I fall quick, and then it doesn't last. I was perfectly happy just being alone. Unfortunately, that's not how it worked out. <laughs> My boyfriend's name is Zied. We met on Facebook. I saw Zied's picture pop up in the people you may know, and I thought, oh my God, he is gorgeous. Sent him a friend request, but turns out he lives in Tunisia. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. We did watch this. We watched this. I remember this now. We actually saw this. Fuck, I'm going to keep playing it for a little bit, but I got to pee. <laughs> Fuck! But that did not stop me from wanting to know more about him. One of the first things that I asked him was, how old are you? He did say he was 26, and I said, oh, that's too bad. I'm 47. But he's very sweet and romantic. And even though we haven't met, I fell in love. I couldn't help it. If you could see our messages, there are so many emojis. Like, he's just the most romantic, sweet person in the world. I'm always sending him funny filters. Um, oh, that's not attractive. The one that I use the most is the one that just makes me look prettier. <laughs> it smooths out my skin a little bit. But it's funny to send him these. That one's cute. Baby, I will see you in a week. I'll see you soon. <laughs> he has the most beautiful green eyes I've ever seen in my life. And 
he has prettier lips than I do. Bro, this is one of the all-time greats, dude. I, I feel like no one remembers this shit, though. Do you guys even remember this? I remember some parts of it. I don't really remember all of it, but I just remember him being fucking crazy. Like, uh, yes, uh, wait. Rebecca, like, I think that's how he talked. That's all I remember from this entire sequence. Rebecca. This is their first coverage. They have a new one. Didn't they go to fucking the desert and shit? Isn't it tired facing the inside of a door frame every time you walk through a door? Yeah, it sucks. You're so sexy, Rebecca. Okay, we're still playing it. Fuck it. You were playing that samurai game? Forgot the name. Sekiro, yeah. I do. <laughs> he has beautiful lips. I can't wait to finally kiss the them fuck? when we meet wait, in person. I don't remember any of this shit, dude. What I feel like a little schoolgirl. Everything about him is perfect. Okay, dude. <laughs> oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> I love you more. I am for you all my life for you. You are all mine. I love you so much. Really? Me too, I want to kiss you, baby. He's amazing. That's why I love him. <laughs> Sorry. I can tell he means it. And he makes me happy. And I deserve it. <laughs> In just a few days, I'm leaving for Tunisia to meet the man of my dreams for the first time. The whole thing is crazy, but I can't help it. And I hope to leave Tunisia engaged. nervous about the flight so the flight is 15 hours 15 hours yeah i'm gonna be fine i promise i mean i know you're worried but at this point there is no way i'm not going okay this is the second time now that you're getting involved with a foreign man yeah what makes it different this time i've been married three times and the first two were average, run-of-the-mill American men. And then a couple of years ago, I met my ex on Facebook, and he was from Morocco. We ended up getting married in Morocco, and I brought him over here on the spousal visa, but it was within three or four months that I saw another side of him. Because I'm a private investigator, I started realizing that there was something going on, and I placed a, a GPS tracker on his car, and I found out that he was cheating on me with other women. I helped put your life back together last time. I don't want to see you get hurt again. You know, I make it seem like I'm not worried, but I have given it a lot of thought. I'm just worried that she doesn't really know this guy like she thinks she knows this guy. I've already seen what she went through with her ex. When she realized what her ex was doing, things did not end well there. Have you done a background check on this guy? I haven't done like one that we can do through the agency. With the work that we do. I know. And the, the, the crazies that we see out there. I don't know how to do an international background check, but every single thing that I could possibly find about him, I have looked for. I feel like if there was something going on, I would know it. OK, look, before you leave, I'm getting all of his information. I'm running the background check. Mm -hmm. And let's pray and hope that it's good. Because at that point, you're there, girl, and there's going to be no turning back. I have not seen a single red flag with Zied. But it's so easy on the internet to be a certain way. You know, I've already been through this. I've told my children, I know I've done this before, but trust me, it's, it's different this time. And what if it's not? My boyfriend, Zied, lives in Tunisia. He's 26 years old. I'm 
going to meet him for the first time, and I cannot wait. But my family and friends definitely wish that I wasn't doing this. They were actually angry with me because I've done this before with another man. Oh my gosh, I need a drink. So you know my trip to Tunisia is coming up. Um, when do you leave? Next Wednesday at like 9 o'clock. Okay. I'm worried about it, about you going over there. But I know you, and you get very caught up in your head. Once you get something in your head, you're going to do it no matter what. I can't put myself in her shoes to see that how you can fall in love with somebody over the phone, or how you can trust somebody that you've never met before. She got really carried away with the first one, too, with her ex. She's not thinking clearly right now at all. I know, being your mom, that you're worried for me. You have to understand that I honestly believe that this relationship was going to work, or I wouldn't be going through this. You had that same feeling before, and you see how bad it turned out. What did he do in Tunisia? Like, what is his job? So he works at the TV station, so he makes sure that each of the, the television shows has people in the audience. He's out of season right now, but... That's the thing, like, how does he really make his money in the off season? I just don't want a situation where you get used and then boom, he's gone. The way the world is today, people are paying to get married, to come here to become American citizen. Hey, you're not, I promise, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I promise you that's not gonna be an issue. You don't know. But you don't know. Don't say that. But that's the thing, like, it's just you don't know Bro, when he puts down the phone. These used to be these used to be way crazier, dude. They used to be like the fucking GPSing of the the GPS chip on the car. Like some of these later uh, season ones that we've seen so far, like Darcy and the Stakeman, is nothing in comparison to like it's nothing in comparison to like the fucking lady who's like, yeah, I. I put a goddamn microchip in my husband. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, where is he at? Like, what what is he doing when he puts down the phone? I made the decision to just blindly trust a man that I met on the internet because he's romantic and sweet and he says and does all the right things. But when I start thinking about, it's absolutely a possibility that he's taking advantage of me. I can't wrap my head around what I would do. It's hard for me to tell my children, trust me, I'm not making a mistake, and know that I could be making a mistake. In one week, I'm traveling to Tunisia to meet my boyfriend, Zied, for the first time. You know, this last couple of years have been some of the toughest that I've ever been through. So I'm excited to start my life with him and not be worried about my past. Zied and I video chat three or four times a week and my process for getting ready would be similar to if he were here and he said, you know, I'm gonna pick you up at seven. I make sure that my makeup looks good and I do my hair. You know, the lighting isn't always great. So I got the ring light and it certainly doesn't hurt to help me look sexier. That's good. I worry when we see each other for the first time because I send a lot of my videos and pictures with filters to make myself look better. I'm 47, he is 26. The age difference is a huge concern of mine. Hey, baby. Hi, baby. How are you? I'm good. I miss you so much. I miss, I miss you too, baby. How many days until I'm there? Nine days. And then it will be 21 days together. I love this so much. 
I have never been to Tunisia, and I don't really know what the plan is. The only thing that Ziad has told me is he will be picking me up from the airport, and what I want to do is run to him and attack him. I'm worried that, <laughs> that I'm going to do that. So are you nervous? No, no, no. This is my dream. I can't wait. I know. What are we going to be doing when I'm there? I show you how much I love you. Really? Where, but thank you, baby. And you know I'll do the same. And I do so much time with you, with my family. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes? Like, are you going to stay at the hotel with me? Yes. No problem. Here, no problem. Your father thinks that we will not sleep together. In Tunisia, unwed couples cannot share a hotel room together. So Ziet's father has made it clear that he wants us to sleep in separate rooms. I'm terrified that they're going to confront me about this while I'm there. I just don't want your father to think that I'm a bad person for coming there like this and doing that. Oh, no. Don't worry for this. I promise. I love you. And you in my heart all the time. I know, baby. I love you so much. I can't wait to see you. I love Kiss you. Kiss you and touch you. Yes, please. I want the engagement. I want the wedding. I want our life to start. But I just have left a lot of things out about my past. I love you so much. I know, baby. Bye, baby. I'm keeping a secret from Ziad. When I get to Tunisia, it deserves for, you know, for me to be completely honest, but I have no idea what Ziad is going to do when he finds out. He could absolutely end this relationship. In four days, I'm traveling to Tunisia to meet my boyfriend Ziad for the first time. I can't wait to finally meet him, but there is a big secret that I'm keeping from him. So as of right now, I'm not technically divorced from uh, my ex. Um, so I, I just, I think I put it off emotionally. I just kept putting it off. It, it just, it didn't end well. The whole relationship didn't go well. So he finally signed the papers. But Ziad, he thinks I've already filed. It's going to be an issue. I think that at some point during the time that I'm there with him, the topic is going to come up, and I'm going to have to be honest with him. And it scares me to death because he's so jealous. Ziad knows about my ex. But he doesn't know everything, like the fact I'm still married. Today, I'm going to file the paperwork to get my divorce process started. But I won't even have a court date until after I come back from Tunisia. So when I show up in Tunisia, I'm technically someone else's wife. And in Zied's culture, a relationship with a married woman is strictly forbidden. I would like to think that he's going to be understanding, but that's a pretty big deal. So I am here at the courthouse. I just need to get this over with. Zia tells me that he loves me and says all the things that I want to hear. I have no idea what Ziad is going to do when he finds out that I am still married. I'm scared that it would cause the end of the relationship. Do you think that is a possibility? Yeah, it could be, of course. Seems like you should have prepared better, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of feels like 
kind of feels like maybe you should have, uh, I don't know. Figured it out beforehand. Or at least tell the dude about it. How adorable. She's she's a little crazy if I remember correctly. Do I don't really remember much want? though. I don't. In two days, I'm flying to Tunisia to meet my boyfriend Zied. He's 26. We met on Facebook. And I just can't wait to be with him for the first time. Good morning, ladies. Hi. Hey. What brings y'all in today? So I am going on a trip soon to Tunisia to meet my boyfriend Zied. Okay. I haven't met him yet, so um, okay. I definitely want to find something, you know, some things that are, like, really sexy to wear. Okay. Will um, you come to the right place? Awesome. We've got lots for you awesome. to try I'm on. I'm so excited. Thank All you. Right, I'll be right All back. Right. Really pretty oh, look at it. that. It's kind of <gasps> like a bustier. Yeah. Do you think it's a little ironic that you're going to, like, a Muslim country where they're very conservative in your lingerie shopping? He's going to be okay with it, and I know he's going to love it. My daughter Tiffany has been very skeptical of my relationship with Zied, so I hope to have her support before I leave. All right, I'm just going to reach around you and take some quick measurements. So has Zied seen your body? He has. He has seen all of it, every inch of it. Um, but of course, you know what? It's different in person. We send each other a lot of photos, but I use filters. I'm 47, he's 26. So obviously that's, you know, I'm a little self-conscious about that. Are you, Mom, are you gonna have sex with him like on the first night? Absolutely. Yes. Like if I could do it in the first five minutes, I would. <laughs> as of right now, I wouldn't trust Sied as far as I could throw him because they've never met before. So I think she should be careful with how fast she moves it in case he's in it for the wrong reasons. And I wish I could just like hold onto her leg like I did when I was a kid and just kind of keep her here. But I can't. However, Does it not worry that you've never met him? Yeah, but you know, you've seen and you're gonna we've talked him the first it, night, like the first time you meet him. Okay, we're, we've had some pretty interesting conversations <laughs> online and videos and things like that. So it's just that we haven't done it in person yet. <laughs> See, it has got a very healthy sexual appetite. Even though we've never met, we have a lot of chemistry. We do a lot of sexting. <laughs> there is one issue that um, his father apparently does not think that we're going to be sleeping together when I'm there. He thinks that we are staying in the same hotel, but that we're not sleeping in together. In separate beds? I think so. Apparently, in Tunisia, if you're not married, you know, you will not sleep in the same bed and you do not have sex before marriage. But Zied is not your typical Muslim. So what if he finds out that you're sleeping together? Do you think his dad's gonna find like an issue with that? That scares me to death because I wanted him to have a higher opinion of me. Well, what are you gonna do? Well, I'm, I'm gonna sleep with him, but I sure as hell hope that he doesn't find out. I respect the Muslim culture. All right, you ready to get started? I am. but. At my age, I, I don't want to take anything slow. <laughs> and definitely not with Zied. All right, here she comes. <gasps> Mom, is <this> that <laughs> is so pretty. And Look at yourself in the mirror. I did in the Wait till you see the full thing. Oh, my gosh. How do you feel in this? I feel sexy, but I still have that issue that, you know what, he is 20 years younger than me. No, I have a lot of confidence, She's but such when it a really comes down coomer, to it, dude. I have definitely held back who I really am. Now that I'm leaving in a few days, I'm terrified that when he sees me in the airport, it's going to be like, you're not what I thought you were. Like, who are you? I, I just need a minute. Okay. Mom, what happened? New chicken just Mom. dropped. Just a minute, please. 